Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Adam Smith from NobelPrize.org, which is the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Hello, uh, yes. Uh, many, many congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. Uh, your, your work using phage display to um, engineer antibodies that became medicines is really a perfect example of how translational research would work, wouldn't you say? Uh, y y yes, because I suppose um, I started, I wasn't actually thinking about doing translational work at the time I started the work, so it was much more um, a sort of interest in how one might create new molecules in general. So I, I didn't actually, um, in, in my earlier work with protein engineering, I'd just been more interested in understanding how enzymes and things work, and then I started moving to antibodies again to try to understand how antibodies worked. And then I realized the power of uh, evolutionary technologies to uh, create large repertoires of them and to select them. Mm. And of course, I think there are two components to the work that were really very important. The first was the generation of repertoires um, and making sure those repertoires um, were as efficient, um, you know, fully folded proteins. And then secondly, the way of displaying them um, on um, the use of the phage, which George Smith had provided pointers to. Mm. So, so um, uh, uh, and of course, having, so it wasn't as if I thought at the very beginning, right, I need to uh, uh, create pharmaceutical antibodies. You kind of start working along a different route, and then you find yourself gradually being, um, you know, seizing opportunities as they come up. Mm -hmm. And those opportunities were, were um, opportunities to, to, to actually overcome a really difficult problem, which was how to make human antibodies against human self-antigens. Mm. And so I realized that we could create this by, um, uh, by using evolutionary technology. In some sense, it's a bit, how, a bit like how the immune system works. You could also regard it as a... Uh, I mean, you could think in terms of early evolution, but if you think about um, uh, the, the, the way in which the immune system works, that is an evolutionary system. So we effectively, what we did is we started to rationalize it in terms of how, our, how can we mimic the immune system, which is an ev evolutionary system, to make, um, to make human antibodies. Uh, uh, but without all the checks and controls the immune system would have that prevent you from making anti-self antibodies. Quite. So how can you mimic and then direct? Correct. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a very important message in all of that, isn't, isn't there, that um, one doesn't really know where the opportunities are going to arise, so you have to do lots and lots of basic research in order to be in a position. I certainly agree with that. I mean, it, it, it's so, so my strategy, my personal strategy has been to do the basic research, and let, and, but to be mindful of opportunities that may arise. Um, in other words, not to say, oh, well, that's applied, I'm not going to do it. My own view has been, you know, actually, if I just did the basic research and I came up with a, you know, a very interesting method and I didn't take it any further, then people would say, well, that's just a curious, you know, it's a very clever little system he's got there, but, you know, um, it's a bit of a curiosity, really. Um, uh, so I thought, actually, one needs to prove it. You need to drive it all the way through. And so I certainly enjoyed it. Let me just turn this yes, blinking phone off. I've just had the university people here trying to um, coordinate all the incoming calls. It's like a, a siege. We can't actually get any, all the phone lines blocked. <laughs> so, yeah. I, can, I can imagine. You're a scientist, you're an inventor, you're an entrepreneur, yeah. you're an administrator. Where do you get the energy yeah. to do all this? Well, it's rapidly fading, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, again, I suppose um, I, I, I'm, I don't necessarily do all of them terribly well. I've done each of them well at different stages in my life because in the end you have to say, why does the public give, um, is willing for, for a large sums, I mean billions per year, to go into supporting science? It doesn't agree to put the same amount into, hum into humanities. And the reason for that is that the public believes that some good will come of it. And if we want to maintain credibility with the you know, public in general, um, we have to show that from time to time, um, yes, indeed, exciting things will happen, um, and particularly things that um, are, are in the, for the public good. So I think it's terribly important that scientists don't ignore the opportunities that may come from their work. 
That doesn't mean to say, some people say, well, applied research, um, yeah, that has no place in academia. Um, uh, and I, 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 I'm not sure I agree with that, but um, yeah, there is a bit of an obsession now that you put the focus on application and you, know, you write projects for application. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, um, but I think that sometimes if you want to make big leaps, it's sometimes more effective to be a little bit more defocused mm. so that you actually focus on, on some basic research and you give the people the freedom to, uh, and perhaps the, expect them to, to, to be responsible. And, and if they don't want to take up the opportunities themselves, at least alert other people to them so that these uh, the, the opportunities latent within whatever their inventions are are um, can actually be exploited. So I think we kind of have a duty as scientists to do that. That's mm. my, 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 my personal view. I must just very briefly touch on the LMB. It's yet another Nobel Prize from that environment. Um, much has been said, but what is it that makes it so particularly special? People refer to the LMB culture as the thing, as one of the things that makes it special. It's an attention to people who are willing to tackle very big problems. I mean, problems that are so big that you, you couldn't just solve it in, in a grant. <laughs> the kind of problem that you could devote your, your life to. Um, I was very fortunate in having mentors, um, uh, Fred Sanger and Cesar Milstein, who exercised a kind of very benign um, mentorship, but encouraged us to think big. Mm. Well, I, I should leave you to your amazing day that's about that's unfolding yes, right <laughs> yes indeed thank you so much thank you very much thank you